What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching another video. Today we got something really cool in the mail for my Audi that I've been waiting for. I got a P3 gauge, so I'm going to open that up and show you guys and we're going to go down to the car, install it, and go through that process. So here's the box. Let me show you what it comes with. So I have a little manual here. Here is the gauge. I haven't even opened this up yet. It's actually packaged very nicely. So we have the gauge in here. I'll show you how that goes in. And we have the harness that I'll show you how to wire and the little power box. So let's go down to the car and hey, one of my kittens. And we're gonna install this. Wanna help me install this in the car? Yeah? No? Yes? That's a yes. All right guys, so we're down at the car now and we're gonna be installing the gauge in this vent right here. It's super simple to remove. It just pries forward and you pull it out. I suggest using a plastic pry tool like this so you don't scratch anything or break anything. You could also probably get away with just putting your fingers behind this a little bit and pulling, but I feel a little safer using this pry tool. So let's pull this vent out and go from there. So I got my pry tool. You're gonna wanna start to pry around the vent like so, okay and it's just gonna start to pop out. You don't wanna be super hard on it, okay? Okay, okay. So now that's almost all the way out, actually. So now with your hand, here we go. It's coming out, there you go. And now the vent is completely removed Then you have the whole hole there. And it's as simple as that to take the vent out of one of these cars. All right, guys, so next step is we need to remove the front part of this vent out so we can install the gauge part so i don't know if you can see it i have a light shining to it there are two little clips on each side that we need to press to remove the front of the vent you're going to need some needle nose pliers and you're going to have to press both of them down at the same time to release the vent out of its little assembly here actually there's a better look at those two little clips that you need to push in right there as you can see when you move the vent on the back here a little bit there you go so this would definitely be easier having a second person pulling it from the bottom, but when you squeeze it, okay, you got to be super careful. You don't want to break the vent. Okay, there we go. So now we have the vent off from the front, so we can set that to the side, and now we can take the gauge and install it into the assembly right there. So we have the P3 gauge here, and we have the wire here that comes out of the gauge, and we have our vent assembly, so we're going to run the wire through the assembly like so all the way through and then this part how like the stock vent had is going to clip into the square part right there is going to push in so this is the orientation that you're going to want everything in the two buttons are going to go to the top right and you're gonna have your little p3 gauge logo right here that's going to be obviously in the right orientation as well and you're gonna want the vent to be open like so and you're gonna push it right into where the stock one goes inside the center it should click right into place perfect so now that's in and as you can see just like the stock one it's inside like so and now we have the wire running out of it now i'm going to show you guys how to do the wiring and how to route it all right, so I'm going to be routing my wiring through here. So you're going to want to remove the side panel that's going to expose where your fuses are and all that. So we're going to run the vent, put that into place, and then run the wiring right through this bottom piece here. And then I will show you how the connections go on that gauge. All right, guys, so here's the control box. And it's cool because they test it before sending it out. So it shows you the date that they actually tested the control box on to make sure that everything works. So we're going to take the wire from right here. And this is just going to plug in to the box so so now that's plugged in and now we have our wiring harness so this is going to be connected to your obd2 port and then it actually comes with some extra wiring so that uh i believe once for like your ethanol gauge if you're going to be running a gauge that they provide and a couple of other things but we didn't get any of that stuff because i already have a ethanol sensor in the car the uh, fuel it one so this is just going to connect to the other side of the box So, so we have this connection right here. And that should just clip right in like so. And now this is the setup you're gonna have. So now we're gonna route all the wires and hide as much as we can and then close everything up and see how the gauge works, if it works. 
All right, guys, so this is how I ended up routing everything. So the control box is gonna sit back here. We're all behind the panel, nothing's going to interfere. I actually ended up disconnecting this harness in the middle right here, so I can run the wire. There's a little hole back here that you can discreetly run your wires behind because I want everything to be pretty much hidden. So you could disconnect this and run it if you want to do it the same way that I did. So you could pull it up through here and you won't be able to see anything. So all of this stuff is going to connect like so and sit back here. And now we're going to just connect the OBD connection for the car that's in. And this, like I said, is just gonna tuck up right in there. And the panel should hide all of this so you won't see any of these wires. So let me push the gauge all the way in now. Okay, so now that's in place and that's nice because we can still open and close the vents. So we're gonna start the car and see uh, if this works. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Everything's connected. I still left the panel off just in case I have to touch something up. Maybe something's not connected right. So everything's in place. We're gonna start the car up and see if the gauge comes on when we start it up. Hopefully it does. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, all right, so everything is on. Not sure what setting this is. Uh, let me go through the different modes, I think. Okay, so this is boost. So, oh yeah, okay, so everything is fluctuating. Uh, coolant temperature. Okay, that's really cool. Speed, obviously zero, I'm not moving. Battery voltage, I'm assuming. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, intake air temperatures, that's really cool. Wow, 142. What else? EGTs, okay. Ignition, I'm not 100% sure what that said. Throttle. AFR, is this really nice to be able to monitor that too? That's perfect, 14.7 right when it should be at idle. So everything looks like it's working appropriately. I'll probably leave it on boost for now but it looks like the install was a success. It looks really nice, let me close the door. Honestly, that's super clean, and even if I turn my air up, I still get a good amount of air that comes through. The only you know bad part is that obviously this is not oscillating, but still, I can still close the vent, not have any air come through, open it up, still have a good amount of air. So honestly, install was a success. I'm gonna put the panel back on, and that should wrap everything up. All right, and this is how everything looks when it's all closed up. We got the panel back, the gauge is still there, all nice and sleek. The only wires you're gonna see are the ones here on the bottom. This is pretty inevitable. You really can't hide these too well, but nobody's gonna be looking in here anyway. And it does beat having that long wire come up from the access port when I had it mounted up here. So that's really nice. And honestly, looks super clean, looks a lot classier than the access port just sitting there. So install was a success. All right, guys, so that is going to conclude the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to put a link in the description for the P3 gauge that I purchased. Uh, honestly, it looks really nice so far. I love it. I can't wait to go out and drive the car with it. I know a lot of you guys are probably asking why I'm not going to be running the access port anymore. And simply, uh, it's too in the way. And it's good that it monitors a lot of things. Obviously, the access port is awesome and known to be able to monitor many different things at the same time. But honestly... I trust the tune that EQT gave me. The car runs 100% all the time, and I honestly just didn't want a gauge here in my face 24 seven whenever I drive the car. This is a lot less in your face, and I can monitor just these simple things, and I just like the way it looks, everything matches and all that. And I don't know, I just didn't like the way that the access port looked on the car. Obviously, I still have it. I need it for my tuning when I switch tunes or if I need to log and all that stuff. Obviously, I'm gonna keep using it, but for now, it's gonna stay in my glove box or even I'm gonna keep it inside unless I really need it. So that's pretty much what it is. I just don't need the access port uh, working all the time and plugged in. This gauge is just a lot better for my needs. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. The install and the wiring is so, so, so easy. This should not take you any more than like 10 minutes to do. The hardest part is getting that vent out. This part, this is the hardest part is removing this. You don't want to break anything. And luckily I didn't and everything is good. If I ever want to sell the gauge, I can and I can put this back on, which is cool. But please like, comment, and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.